Ag AM in Kansas brought to you in part by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Hello and welcome to Horsin' Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today, joined by Dr. Dylan Luter. Uh, he is a board certified surgeon here in large animal at Kansas State and uh, assistant professor and does a lot of the emergency uh, work here at the at the vet school so welcome yeah uh, thank you for having me uh, you know I think that uh, something that's always important to go through that a lot of horse owners you know they're very leery about is colic surgery or if a horse would need to go to colic surgery some maybe misperceptions of that or just being comfortable with that situation and, and potential options for that. So could you go through um, kind of if an owner or even that referring veterinarian is getting ready to potentially refer maybe to you in, at night or uh, even during the day, when is the best time to try to figure out when surgery may be a needed option? Sure, Chris. Uh, that's a very common question we get and a lot of people have a perception that uh, the colic is really bad, it, it may not be worth going to surgery and uh, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is uh, the sooner that we can get the horse here the better. Uh, once it sort of becomes evident that uh, this is not just a routine run-of-the-mill colic that one vet visit uh, isn't going to take care of. And with that and, and as you move forward, um, what are some different like colics that happen and you don't have to go through the whole gamut maybe just a few of the more common ones that, that are on the surgery table that you've uh, been dealing with here at Kansas State. Sure uh, well certainly the most common one that we see uh, here are large colon impactions or displacements so basically the feed material in the colon uh, becomes really dry and it just gets stuck in there or the colon moves to the wrong spot mm -hmm. um, that's one of the most common that we see here and then the other aspect would be uh, a large colon or a small colon twist where something twists and cuts off the blood supply and then we may need to go in and, and take that part out. So. And I think that's something where too some uh, owners think well if you take out part of the bowel that horse isn't going to do well. What's the aspect when you have that conversation maybe there's devitalized small intestine or large intestine what is that kind of uh, communication with the owner dependent sure. on I guess. Sure it is uh, situation dependent but um, you know a lot of times uh, we look at how sick the horse is uh, before going to surgery and try to get an estimate of what sort of complications might occur because that can really affect how the horse does after surgery. Uh, but if the horse is relatively stable and um, we're able to take the, the devitalized piece out, um, actually up around 70 to 75 percent of horses, depending on the procedure we do, sometimes it's less than that, uh, can actually go back to doing what they're doing and go back to being normal horses. So it, it is definitely a worthwhile procedure. I think that's stuff that uh, owners need to remember is just because they're going to go to surgery doesn't mean they're going to have a life-changing uh, situation where they can't go back to. It all depends on the colic, obviously, but uh, success rate uh, can be fairly good, and it's definitely better than just a 50-50 chance. Oh, definitely. Well, and especially for the, the displacements and impactions that I mentioned, uh, that can be up uh, greater than 90% chance, so uh, it's worth, worth having that in mind. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Luter, and, and giving us the information on colics and colic surgeries. And I guess if people uh, have a horse that's uh, needing colic surgery, you know, you'd be talking to one of the surgeons here at the vet school, maybe even uh, Dr. Luter. But it's one of those things where uh, we're here if you ever need us. That's right. We're here. Feel free to give us a call. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Luter. Thank you. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins for Horsing Around, and we'll see you around. I'm a patient of Kansas Regenerative Medicine in Manhattan. I had uh, stem cell therapy in my hips and my left knee. My wife and I uh, both are patients. We went down there the same day in November. Since then, uh, my hips are feeling a lot better. I can, can work now most of the day if I want to. And uh, before, if I, if I worked in the morning, I was done in the afternoon. Or if I worked in the afternoon, um, I was sure enough done for the rest of the day.